The following program contains language, images, and or subject matter that may be objectionable to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Direct from Albany, New York, it's time for The Media Zone! With your hosts, Ed and Dave! Tonight, a look at this week's new film and DVD releases. And the chance to win free movie tickets with the Poster Pairs game. And now your hosts, Ed and Dave! Hello and welcome to the Media Zone. Ed and Dave here, Ed and Dave with you. Do we have winter now or not? Because we're taping ahead. What do you think? No, no snow this winter? No, there'll, there'll be no snow. No we're, snow? We're I don't done. think so. It's not happening. It's not happening. From here on out, it's just dustings. Probably, or it has been so far. Probably look out the window when this show airs. There'll be we'll three be, feet we'll of be buried. snow out there. But so far as we tape this, nothing. Not a nil. Not here. A few, a few uh, scrawny inches of official snow. On tonight's show, we have Eye in the Sky, Hello, My Name is Doris, Brothers Grimsby, and 10 Cloverfield Lane, Ooh. which is somehow connected to that Cloverfield film we saw about the monster we didn't see. I saw that movie. Yeah. I liked it. You saw the monster at the end. Briefly. Yeah. That's pretty good. That was one of those found footage films where we're seeing the film through somebody's camera right. i saw a trailer for something coming up it's uh hardcore harry i think Ooh. or henry where the entire film is told through the eyes of hardcore harry uh -oh. who is some kind of uh agent or something and you see him fighting people but i don't know it's probably going to be very annoying <laughs> you see <laughs> only the hands and the feet and the uh, it looked like it was hard R, so there's lovemaking scenes oh. where you <laughs> actually use your finger <laughs> oh. <laughs> to whatever they're doing. So when you see like only the hands and feet, yes, and then you only see the hands and feet. Yeah, that. Yeah. As well. Yeah. I, we're wow. gonna take it to the extreme with hardcore Harry coming soon. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> All right, let's get started here, Dave. Are you first or I'm no, first? No, you go ahead. Eye in the Sky. But don't forget, we're giving away tickets today, too. Sure tickets Hopefully. coming at the end of the show. Going to try and give them away. Helen Mirren, Aaron Paul, oh, no. Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. Take a moment of silence. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Catherine Powell is a UK-based military officer in command of a top-secret drone operation to capture terrorists in Kenya. Through remote surveillance and on the ground intel, Powell discovers the targets are planning a suicide bombing and the mission escalates from capture to kill. But as American pilot Steve Watts is about to engage, a nine-year-old girl enters the kill zone, triggering an international dispute reaching the highest levels of US and British government over the moral, political, and personal implications of modern warfare. Rated R for some violent images and language. And Alan Rickman's final performance. Hello, I am Alan Rickman. Jeez. What did he go from? Do we rem remember from a couple know. of shows ago? I don't know. Well, I know he was, uh, he, was, he was on The Tonight Show not too long ago. Yeah, and he was sick fine. something he didn't know he had until it was too late. Mm. I think Helen Mirren has been nude in every decade that really? she's been acting in. Do you think, it, uh, what, uh, even this one? <laughs> not, uh, probably not this one. I, she could pull it off, I think. Yeah, she does. We'll have to do a special uh, segment on that. Uh, on <laughs> the nudes of Helen Mirren. Was she in The Thief, The Wife, The Cook, and The Lover? Yes. 1990 nudity from Helen Mirren. Wow. Goes back to the 60s, I believe. 
and somewhere in the early uh, 2000s. I don't know about the 2010s yet. There might be enough. <laughs> well, you know, Ed, as I get older, I'm okay with it. You're okay with older, older uh, Helen Mirren nudity. It preps me. It preps me for what I'm going to be getting oh, no. later on <laughs> in life. If I if I even get that. Yeah, you don't know what it, you're going to get. You never know what you're going to get. On a dating get. site. No. I don't know if I could use a dating site. You don't have to worry about it, do you? <laughs> no. Thank God. If I'm hearing these horror stories about dating sites. <laughs> I guess you just, if you're on there and you you do the proper, you know, intel. <laughs> Speaking of this eye in the sky, no, though. Uh, I don't even know. No. Let's move on well, to let's the hold, We'll hold that off till after the DVD releases. No, I'm not even going to go further with it. Hello! <laughs> Hello! My name is Doris. With Sally Field, Peter Gallagher, and Tyne Daly. Oh, oh, there's Tyne Daly right there. Look oh, oh, time has been uh, kind to Tyne. T time know. has been kind to Tyne? <laughs> sort of. Well, well, they're getting better, anyway. Anyway, this is a dry read for me. I didn't even go through this. <laughs> when Doris Miller meets John Fremont, her company's hip new art director, Sparks Fly. At least for Doris. She didn't use a dating site. Her first encounter with true romance, outside of the pages of a novel, convinces Doris that she and the mostly unaware John are meant for each other. God, isn't she like 50 years older than him? In the cluttered... Oh, what happened? What did I miss? I'm looking down reading. Oh, no. Okay. She's imagining. Uh, oh, coupling, yeah. Coupling? Okay. In, uh, in the cluttered house she shared with her late mother, Doris minds the internet for information on her one and only, guided by the 13-year-old granddaughter of her best pal, Roz. When Doris begins showing up at John's regular haunts, she wins over his Williamsburg friends and her, with her eclectic vintage wardrobe, quirky naivete, and unironic enthusiasm for their rooftop knitting circle. Her life, her new life, brings Doris a thrilling perspective, but also creates a rift between her and her longtime friends and family, who believe she's making a fool of herself over a guy half her age. Eager for all the experiences she has missed out on, Doris throws caution to the wind. Go, Doris! <laughs> and follows her heart for the very first time. <laughs> Doris is going to get a PCS. Oh, is this guy from, is this from the New Girl show? Is he? Got I don't know. I haven't seen New Girl, but it seems that he's I've seen one of those. I haven't that seen was funny. I haven't seen any. Although I do like to look at Zoe Deschanel. <laughs> Zoe Deschanel. Very frumpy. Maybe that's just the, the character she's playing. Who? Time? <laughs> Time. I think she's been frumpy ever since she uh, got off by uh, Clint Eastwood well, in that. Uh, is the whatever, Enforcer. Yeah, whatever one that was. That looks like a good tour de force performance for Sally Field. Is there? Possibly even an Oscar nod. That's not one of the two broke girls, is it? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen that. that <laughs> Kat Dannings, right? No, the other one. The blonde one. Yeah. I don't know who that is. That's either. the other one. Yeah. I know Kat Dannings is on that show. All right. All right, Doris. That might be fun for a little diversion in March if you have, <laughs> need to go out on a date. For, could, uh, I, will, I will refuse all dates if it involves that film. Oh, no. Just letting uh, you know. Maybe The Brothers Grimsby would be a good date movie. Sasha Baron Cohen, oh, no. Mark Strong, Isla Fisher, Rebel Wilson, Gabare Sidibe, Bahaba Huba, <laughs> and Penelope Cruz. Is it Isla Fisher or Isla? What is it? I don't know. Isla? I think it's Isla. I could be wrong. All I know is that the, I'm going to announce the Chinese water torture is over. <laughs> the winds might have, must have stopped from last week. M16's top assassin has a brother. Unfortunately for him, he's an English football hooligan from the town of Grimsby. Nobby has everything a man from Grimsby could want, including 11 children and the most gorgeous girlfriend in the northeast of England. There's only one little thing missing, his little brother Sebastian, who Nobby has spent 28 years searching for after they were separated as kids. Nobby sets off to reunite with Sebastian, unaware that not only is his brother M16's deadliest assassin, but he's just uncovered plans for an imminent global terrorist attack. 
on the run and wrongfully accused, Sebastian realized that if he's going to save the world, he will need the help of his biggest idiot brother. <laughs> ah, I'm sure this is rated R. Rated R. Any Sasha Baron Cohen film usually has a dangling participle. No, oh, jeez. In what font would you like that? Uh, uh, speaking of dangling participle, Dave, we don't have the rating on this one. Uh, I did see Deadpool. Okay. Remember, it was graphic nudity? Yeah. Graphic nudity is a burnt wiener in uh, Deadpool. A burnt uh, wiener. A burnt wiener. Okay. It's burnt. Well, the, the X uh, serum that he was given distorted his skin. Oh, okay. Making it all wrinkly. Oh. Penelope Cruz. Penelope Cruz has been turning it up in a lot of things lately. For anybody who enjoys her performance. I don't think I do. But I haven't seen any of her films. Uh, no, I can't say that there's any I can recall. How long is this trailer? <laughs> I did a lot of reading. This has got to be over two and a half. Will you stop shooting everything? Coming soon. Ooh, wow. Ooh. Well, what do you think? My name is Doris might be better for a date night than the Grimsby. So far. Well, maybe this one. Oh, this is a good scary movie. Oh, have gonna... your date clutching your arm. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not my arm. Oh. I'm going to have to read slow because this is a very <laughs> short read. And I don't it's know a how short long. clip, too. This... Oh, is it? Okay. Yep. 10 Clover Lane. Starring Mary Elizabeth Winstead and John Goodman. Of the film, J.J. Abrams says, The idea came up a long time ago during production. We wanted to make it a blood relative of Cloverfield. How about that? Okay. The idea was developed over time. We wanted to hold back the title for as long as possible. Is this read is just him giving an interview? <laughs> we don't want to spoil anything. It reportedly follows a girl who, after losing consciousness in a car accident, wakes up in an underground cellar with a man who tells her that the outside world has perished in a nuclear attack. Oh, that dirty bird. It's almost a, is it misery? It's sort of like misery, but there's a monster out there, which is the monster we didn't see in Cloverfield. Oh. I wonder if we're going to see it in this one. Spaceship. Does it look like a spaceship? Yeah. It's an underground cavern. I thought you said this quickly. Short. It's a minute and a half. Oh, well, I could have spread that read out a little more. You so could have spread it a little more. I could have. There oh, we go. Man, you and your double entendres. I'm doing double entendres like the kid critic, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Got him in trouble. Oh, that's good. I went on his Facebook page. He's, he, he went from getting like three likes <laughs> on his comments to almost none. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, took a hit. You can't make fun of America's sweetheart, Amy Schumer. The Dave. last thing she is is America's sweetheart. <laughs> Well, people like her, though. Well, so. she does have that good raunchy humor. We do enjoy that from, yes. our, from our blondes. He, he tried the kid critic, but he could not match her uh, raunch with his raunch. <laughs> and he was shut down. Shut down. Let's see. It's a uh, perfect timing for DVD releases. Oh, let's see what's been released then, shall we? Oh, the Peanuts. Oh, I remember that. You do remember we did remember that we one. we did that. And this is the computer animation, but with like the same facial drawings. Or right. Something. It looked very close to the 2D, but uh, in 3D. If it, I did not see it. I wanted to see it, uh, kind of, but nobody wanted to see it with me. You so didn't, you didn't ask me. <laughs> what you so, would, so you say nobody, but you, you, you not I knew better. The two people <laughs> that you have known for 35 years. I knew better that you haven't even seen any of the peanut specials on TV. I've seen <laughs> the Christmas one. You have. And they didn't they do a Thanksgiving one too? Oh, yeah. I never saw that one. <laughs> but I saw the Christmas and one. And the Halloween one. I think I've seen that one. Yeah, okay. So there. So in your face. So you wouldn't go out to, and pay God knows what, what it is. No, well, I would. I, you know what? I might now. I got money to burn now. Oh, yeah, now. I got, you got you know, money to burn money and to reasons burn. to go out. Right. Yeah. There you go. But he didn't ask me, so. 
Well, next time. This one I wouldn't ask you to see or anybody else. But... <laughs> I just, uh, was this a surprising bomb or did we expect it, it to be a it bomb? It was a bomb. The uh, Ron Howard directed film, I yes, think? Yes, poor Ron. What? <laughs> <laughs> you got a clunker here. Did he put uh, Clint in here anywhere? <laughs> probably. Or did he see the whale? It's probably the deckhand. Yes. Ooh, Victor Frankenstein. This is another one I probably would have gone out to see, but... Uh... Didn't ask, didn't ask me. Yeah, I didn't get the motivation to even ask anybody right. about this one. Why come the wife doesn't go with your movies? She goes to some. This you saw. This I did see. Because I called you that night. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> called under duress, uh, in my hand. And I, I would like to call back, but it was a live performance, Dave. <laughs> Don't you I have had, a DVR or something? Uh, no, I don't no. have a DVR. You I want to see it live, though. Did anybody see any of this? It was interesting, though, the way they were setting up and running all over the studio. I saw none of it. You were coming down <laughs> off of a devastating date, Dave. Was I? Yes. Oh, was that that day? That was the very day. Oh, okay. Dave had a disturbing date <laughs> under so much distress. I, could, I couldn't keep it to myself. I had to. He had a call. I had to call and vent the, not hostility, but the shock and... and, and well, I, I did call right back at 10 o'clock after the show. And said, is it too late? Is it too late? It was, no, it was I, not. It wasn't too late because I think you were up most of the night. <laughs> so you had well, one of these bad dates. Uh, oh, we're not doing any more DVDs? That's it, isn't it? Is that it? Go back. Let's I make think, sure there's I think more. I purposely, oh, that's it. Okay. I purposely put that last so oh, it would okay. lead into... Uh, I'm not going to say it was a bad date. I'm just going to say it was surprising. And there is... Uh, all right, look. <laughs> yeah, I understand. You don't want to put anybody down, but you have to represent yourself properly on a dating site. I think you do. I don't think most people do. I think they're putting their best foot forward. I mean, even I'm putting my best foot forward, and there isn't one, really. <laughs> but I'm trying. Do you have more than one picture on your dating I do. profile? I have two in there. Almost exactly the same. <laughs> do you have a full body I do, shot? I do not. Do. I do not. So you, you need to put full body. Well, I put full body. People will realize that I'm a midget, and they don't, <laughs> they don't want to go out with this guy. He's too short. But no, there was just one situation where the photo <laughs> that I saw <laughs> looked fine. Okay. Now, listen, there, you can have a photo that makes you look far better than you are in person. And I've also come across many photos <laughs> where it makes you look far worse than you do in person. Uh -huh. I've experienced both. This one was the what, first one. Was it a very close-up picture where you couldn't even yeah. see shoulders? Too close. Yes, it was just, yeah. Much too close. It was close. But I don't even think the face, I don't even, I'm wondering if it was the same person. Because the face <laughs> was <laughs> very different. Oh. And it's probably an older picture. It could have been, could have been. I didn't even. I mean, I, I, don't, I have, I can't even. I have no words. It was, but I'm not saying it was a horrible. <laughs> it was just it was quite surprising, and it, was, it, it just took me back and kind of set the tone for the entire uh, date there, sort of date, a meeting. And there was no way out of this place you were in. Yeah, there was a door. <laughs> <laughs> well, she would see you leave. I could have just, could have just walked, but I don't want to be rude. Be nice. It would have so, been like it should probably should have been like the monsters, where they would see the monster and then the person comes <laughs> running out in fast motion. <laughs> this is what, and the car peels off. You know, it's just like I said, it was just. Weird. But you stay there and endure, endure the entire day. And, I did. You know, you meet somebody <laughs> that looks nothing like the picture. Right. And you're sitting there saying, I hope nobody recognizes me <laughs> in this place. It's not, it's not so much I hope they don't recognize me. It's just like I said, it sets the tone because your mind can't get off the fact that the person you are looking at doesn't really resemble the person you thought was going to be there. I don't know if it's like, a, you know, a, a sisters. And one says, look, put my face out there. We look kind of alike. There's a slight resemblance. We'll put my picture on there, and then you just show up and shock them. That's, I mean, uh, who knows? I don't know. You think you saw the bizarro version of the person <laughs> that was in the, in the picture? <laughs> well, this What's is why you learn something very important, and you should too at home if you're on these dating sites. <laughs> you want to see more than one picture. Okay. 
and you want to communicate with them <laughs> for a while, get to know them and talk to them via email. Even before you call, did you call this person on the phone before you met? <laughs> no, they, they suggested a meeting almost immediately upon contact. And how long? And I'm like, well, what the hell? What have I got to lose? How I really, I lost nothing, Ed. I lost nothing other than it was just an experience. <laughs> it was an experience. It was sorry. in public, so I felt safe. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Initially, I felt safe. That's all. It's just, you, you know, I'm not going to go, like, you know, come to my house out in the country as a first. You're not going to do that. No. Just like I wouldn't expect them to come to my house. Right. The first, you know, meet me at my house. So, I'll, you know, I'll be down in the basement. If you hear chains rattling, just come on down. You don't do that. So it's in public. It's, it's safe. I don't care. I'm okay with doing that. Okay. It's... I've got all the time in the world <laughs> to do that. I don't mind doing that. I would feel, because at some point you have to let the person down, though. And that would be you the do part. It. There's ways of doing it. There's ways of doing it nicely. You send a little message out and just say, you know, I don't feel that we have a connection. I don't feel we have enough. Whatever. There's a nice way of doing that. And then how does the person respond in this instance? <laughs> F you. <laughs> Sometimes they'll either you know say f you or say maybe next time before you date you should sh shave yourself down a little. <laughs> That'll happen if you're a female and you hurt somebody's feeling. I mean, you know what? What the hell? I'm not. I'm no prize. So well, you know, I just you just need to find you know you just you just got to find that one person who is a, as awful a person as you are, and that's all I'm looking for. That's all you're looking the for. The same person who is just. As miserable and a rotten human being as I am. And they're out there. Oh, they're out there. Now, do you ask people when you're on these sites? Uh, I, w I would use these, this criteria. Okay. Let's hear your criteria. What do you like doing uh -huh. on your off time? They usually put that in their profile. Do they? Yeah. I, w I would be looking, for me personally, movies, TV, and no sports. Okay. <laughs> no, which, which, to ma which to many people <laughs> says snore fest. <laughs> they, want, they don't want see a lot of people go out of these sites. They, they're not the ones that they, they don't want to sit home uh -huh. and watch movies and TV, which basically is what I would like to do in the winter. <laughs> you know, I don't mind going out and doing things here and there as long as it's indoors and there's warmth yeah. somewhere. I'm fine. But a lot of these people put, I'm an avid skier. I like hiking and skydiving and zip lining and this and that. And then you just look at it and you're like, you know what? No. I'm not, I know. You know what? Stay inside a couple of days a week is yeah. all I ask. That what I would, con what do they say? Continue on if you're not <laughs> oh, yeah. down for it to get down? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Well, one of them has the first line isn't, you know, I'm a, this person ever. If you're looking for a quick bang, keep reading or move on to the next person. Stop reading. Okay. Goodbye. I'm not looking for a quick bang, but. It's that kind of attitude that you, when you bring that out initially, that's yeah, just that's tough it's a out little, there. Yeah, when you start off negative, and mean negative, I mean, uh -huh. <laughs> I put one, I put one profile of me talking about how awful I am. Yeah, and you got a lot of hits on how that. I have no skills, no talents, just frighteningly average, and I'm just I do I'm not good at this or that, and then people start <laughs> started contacting me. I don't get it, but whatever. So now I'm just going home. Yeah, you were supposed to, and you said, uh, I think after the last taping, you were going to go buy some painting supplies and just yes. stay home and relax. And I guess. And all of a sudden, hits were coming on your bad profile. And then out, out you go. Right, but I've still been painting, so I've got like six in the hopper. You have to bring your painting three down of them, sometime. Three of them aren't bad. Three of them are awful. But whatever. What the hell? Okay. All right, it's Postal Pairs game, folks. That's what time it is. Where you have sent in two numbers from one and six. And we're going to select the name out of the uh, thing here. And whoever we pick out, we'll reveal what's behind the two. <laughs> going to blow your nose in. No, um, draining again. Yeah, okay. We're going to reveal what's behind the two numbers you provided. And if they match, you win two free movie passes. If you're right, spin the wheel, you can win up to 10 tickets. You know, when you work in a place where the humidity level is 24 uh, and normal is 40 to 50, yes. you, your nose tends to dry out. And uh, capture all of the things that should be draining out <laughs> during the week out there. Right. And, then, and then when you bend over, when you're taping your TV show, <laughs> and then it comes out. And Betty Grinter. Oh, Ooh, one in four. Last week, Willie Smith or whatever said one in four. Betty Grinter, one in four, and spin the wheel in. We did one in four last week.
what I just said. Did you not listen to me? I know. I'm, a, I'm amazed there. Oh! It didn't do any better here this time. Uh, what do we got? Next to each other. And, uh, yeah. Nothing. There you go. Well, folks, as Kong will say, or show shortly, <sighs> if you want to enter the game, send an email to this address. It's MediaZone95. I don't know why 95, Ed. Was nine, 1 through 94 taken? That was the year uh, we started the MediaZone. Oh, which is exactly the same show as the one before. Um, MediaZone95 at gmail.com. MediaZone95 at gmail.com. And if you're right, spin the wheel. If you win the two tickets and you're right, spin the wheel, we will spin the wheel. And you have one chance to turn those tickets into ten. Two chances to change it to six. Two chances to double what you want up to four. Six chances you keep the two you won. Five chances you lose one, you go to the movie solo. <laughs> two chances uh, you end up like me staying home. You get no tickets. There you go. And, uh, you know, maybe Ed will call you and say you want to go see the Peanuts movie. <laughs> Uh, or, uh, hello, my name is Doris. Hello, Maybe. my name is Doris. Nothing I want to see this week. Or I am Sam. On our last show, I think uh, there's something I might see. Is but, there? Uh, not next week. All right. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, right in so you can win some free movie Oh, there you tickets. have the tickets again. Why are we showing that again? I think that's how he has to switch. Yeah. What do you need? Some lube over there <laughs> <laughs> on a, our switching board? You know what? I got plenty. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, I, dude. Ran, I ran out. You ran out. <laughs> yeah. Lot, what state? Which dating sites are out there? We have plenty of fish. We know. Oh, for the old folks, you got our time. Our time. You've got Match. You've got eHarmony. Then of course you got Christian Mingle. You got what's the one J date you mentioned? J dates for the Jewish folks. You got BlackPeopleMeet.com. Black people meet. Yes. Is that for only black people meeting, or is that for a white guy that wants to meet a black woman? Or is that there's some other site for don't that? I don't know. I've never, <laughs> I've, I've never, I don't know. I've never Ooh. gone into that one. But they have that one. And then, of course, there's, there's Zeusk. Well, what goes on in that one? For farm animals? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Zootopia. We did, that was last week. Uh, um, and then there's, of course, the ones that are just for, like, you know. Just for the hookups. That's called Craigslist. No, no. Well, that could be, but there's also a whole bevy of ones that just come up for. If all you're looking for is, a, you know, one night, a quick hookup, and you can go into all those. Now, sites. E there's a million sites. Is eHarmony a religious site? No. Because I, one of the ads I said, I heard somebody say it's not just uh, religion or something. No, I don't think eHarmony is. You know, the Christian mingle is. Um, but eHarmony, I'm not sure. I mean, I haven't gone on that one. I've heard that one was a good one. So maybe uh, you should try is. that. I'm not paying <laughs> 30 pay bucks for that. One? For that. Hmm. No, I'm not doing it. If I'm not, well, even, you know, just it is what it is. As I said a while ago, you know, the people are on these sites that aren't paying $10 a month to, right. to find a good date. Well, so, then they're going to find someone like me because yeah. I'm just as cheap as they are. <laughs> you get the, you gets what you pay for there. And then they're going to get what they pay for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time with a midnight special and the little prince and a legion. Divergent Allegiance for those uh, tweens that enjoy that series. What about Miracles from Heaven? Miracles from Heaven. For those of you on Christian Nichols, <laughs> we'll see you next time. I'm sure there's group rates for that movie. <laughs>